Hello everybody, welcome back to Handicap Golf. Recently, I built my very own gaming PC. Uh, so in this video, I want to show you exactly how I did it and how cheaply I've done it uh, and clear a few things up about which graphics cards will work and which processors to go for. So stay tuned to find out how I built my very own gaming PC for my golf simulator. Welcome back to Handicap Golf. Don't forget to check out the channel and more importantly, subscribe for more golf simulator related videos. Now, a few weeks ago, I knew absolutely nothing about how to build a computer. It was a complete foreign language to me, um, but I literally did a couple of weeks worth of research and I spoke to a few people that actually know about computers. Um, and before I knew it, I was ordering stuff off the internet and I was going to attempt to piece it all together and just hope and pray that it worked. To start off with, you need to know what to buy. Um, and I thought there would be like hundreds of parts to building a computer, but there's literally only eight things that you need in order to build your own gaming PC. Um, and these eight parts I'm listing now on the screen. Um, so feel free to pause the video here, make a note of these parts, um, and then the rest of the video will continue to explain how we go about getting each one. There are two websites that you need to become familiar with if you're going to build your own gaming PC. The first one is called PC Part Picker. Now this website is awesome because what it allows you to do is build your own PC virtually and it's also like a price comparison site. So for every part of the PC that you want to buy, it will tell you how much it's gonna cost and it also tells you whether everything is compatible. The next website that you need to know about is called User Benchmark. This website is awesome as well because what it does, it allows you to compare graphics cards against each other. Um, it compares uh, processors against each other. So basically you can see all of the different models that are on the market and see how they weigh up against those recommended products on the Skytrack website. Like any good gaming PC, I started off with the graphics card. Um, believe it or not, there are tons of options when it comes to the graphics card and you don't have to go with the one that it recommends on the Skytrack website in the recommended uh, system requirements for the Golf Club 2019. At the time that I'm making this video, the GTX 1060 is quite an expensive graphics card. Now I've gone for a GTX GeForce 1650 Super and let me tell you, this graphics card runs the Golf Club 2019 on ultra settings and it was like half the price of the GTX 1060 that is in the system requirements for the Golf Club 2019. So let me show you how I came about getting this graphics card. You need to go to a website called User Benchmark. This website is awesome and I spent hours on this website because I'm just a bit anal like that, comparing stuff for the computer. So once you're here, go to GPU because that is short for graphics card. Type in the search bar here, 1060. I'd already done it obviously. And what it does, it brings up the Nvidia GTX 1060. Now it's a six gigabyte model that Skytrack recommends. There it is. But over here, we have some alternatives. All these graphics cards are similar to the GTX 1060, and they're all different prices as well. So I'm going to show you this one, the GTX 1650 Super. This is actually the graphics card that I have put in my gaming PC, which works amazingly on ultra settings. Scroll down, frames per second, the 1650 is 4% better. Scroll down a bit more. The speed of the graphics card, the 1650, is 7% better. On average, it's 2% better, and so on. You can work that out for yourself. And what you should notice is the prices are a hell of a lot cheaper than the 1060 graphics card. Okay, next up we have the processor or the CPU. Now when it comes to processors, you've got Intel processors or you've got Ryzen processors. 
Um, they both do the exact same job. Um, this one is a Ryzen 5 2600 CPU. And the reason why I went for this is because it was a hell of a lot cheaper than the Intel i7 that it recommends on the Skytrack website. And it is faster than a lot of the processors out there. So when it comes to CPU, we're really looking at the gigahertz. So on the Skytrack recommended settings, it says that you need about 3.2 gigahertz to power your computer and run your graphics card and all that. And this Ryzen 5 2600 actually runs at a minimum of 3.4 gigahertz. And it's a lot cheaper than a lot of the other CPUs that are actually out there. Next up, after your graphics card and your CPU, you've got, you get a, you've got to get yourself a motherboard. Now, the motherboard depends on what CPU you actually get. So if you get a Ryzen CPU, you have to get a motherboard that is compatible with the Ryzen. So if you get an Intel processor, you have to get a motherboard that is compatible with the Intel processor. But on the PC Part Picker website, it has a compatibility filter, so whichever, processor you choose then it's going to only give you options for a motherboard that's going to be compatible with that cpu pc part picker another amazing website for building pcs you can build your own pc virtually so it tells you whether everything's going to work inside that pc and i've got the compatibility filter on it will only give me options of motherboards that i can buy that will fit into the pc that i'm currently building Right, then you need some sticks of RAM. It recommends on the Skytrack website that you have at least eight gigabytes, no, not at least, it's at least four gigabytes of RAM, but it's recommended that you have eight gigabytes of RAM. Um, now, RAM or memory, whatever you want to call it, just basically allows you to run multiple programs on your computer at the same time. So I went for eight gigabytes and I went for this Corsair Vengeance and you actually get two sticks in here and each stick has four gigabytes on it so in total uh, you've got eight gigabytes of ram and let me tell you that my computer runs beautifully i can watch well i can stream live sports whilst playing uh the golf club 2019 and there's no buffering there's no lag or anything like that so if you're getting your gaming pc just for um your golf simulator then feel free go for eight gigabytes of ram it works absolutely fine after you've got your sticks of ram then you're going to have to go for a hard drive um now you can either go for a hard disk drive or an ssd drive now for storage um i highly recommend getting an ssd drive because they are much faster and smaller than the hard disk drives so again i headed down to the filters clicked on five stars and I wanted an SSD. Now when it comes to the size, that's completely up to you. I am only using my gaming PC to run my golf simulator software. So I don't need anything really that's 500 gigabytes, one terabyte. So I decided to go for something that's 240 gigabytes. So I decided to go for the Kingston A400. Again, it's got lots of five star reviews. And at 24.45, I thought it was a very good deal. Coming towards the end, you've got to get yourself a power supply. So your power supply is obviously um, the bit of your computer that plugs into the mains and it has quite a few connections in it that connect up to the motherboard and the inside parts of your PC and stuff. Um, so I went for, excuse me, just having a beer. I went for this Be Quiet model. Um, system power 9 it's called uh, works fantastic it's a 500 watt model um, I'll explain all that in the little computer a bit now I went for a be quiet system power 9 which has 500 wattage and if you just check up here it tells you what your estimated wattage of your build is at the moment so 500 watts for me was plenty we're nearly there uh, the next thing that we need is a case for our PC and the case is just the thing that the motherboard and the graphics card and everything goes into. It's just that box that you have everything inside. Now, I wasn't bothered about what my PC looks like. The case is literally just the thing that houses all of the inside bits of your gaming PC. So I just went for one of the cheapest that I could find. Again, filtered by five star reviews. 
sorted by price and chose one of the cheaper options. Lastly, lastly, um, get yourself a Wi-Fi adapter. So it's just a USB stick that plugs into the back of your PC and it turns your computer into a wireless PC. Uh, it's just so you can connect to the internet, so you can connect up to uh, the golf club and play all the online courses and stuff. Um, obviously you're gonna need the internet in the computer because we're in 2020. So you've virtually built your PC, you've ordered everything on the internet and it's all getting delivered. Once it arrives at your door, then you've got all these pieces, these components of a PC that you need to put together, right? Now, this part I felt, this part I found really daunting, but trust me, it isn't difficult at all. It's like piecing together bricks of Lego. As long as you know which part goes where on the motherboard, you're all good. And all I did, I went on YouTube and I typed in how to build your own PC. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna post a link in the in the description down below uh, to the video that I used and the guy was quality. He made it sound really, really simple. And I literally plugged in about 10 wires or something like that, um, turned the computer on and away I went. It was that easy. Okay, that is it. That's your computer built. But there's just one more thing that you need to do. You need to go online and you need to download Windows 10 from the Microsoft website. Download it to a USB drive. I think it costs about £30, something like that. Um, once you've done that and you've connected all your PC up, then you just plug in the USB drive before you turn it on. Turn your computer on and then it'll load up and it should find Windows in there and you'll be able to load up, set all your Windows settings um, and away you go. Okay folks, so this right here is my PC build, right? These are the exact parts that I've bought uh, from the various websites using PC Part Picker to find the best prices and stuff. Um, and as you can see, the total cost of my PC uh, comes to £533. Now, I actually got it a little bit cheaper than this. Um, I think the price of the graphics card may have slightly gone up um, a few quid and maybe a few of the other items as well. I think I got it for like £480. Um, but yeah, uh, what I'll do is if you want to check this out, I will post this link in the description below. So I've set this uh, PC build uh, to public so if you click on this link you should be able to get everything up and then rather than going through everything yourself uh, you can just get the link up click on buy each part and away you go and that's that um, I think I've covered everything there that you guys need to know if anybody has any questions about how I built this gaming PC for my golf simulator please drop a comment below and uh, I'll get back to you I'll answer any questions that I can um, if not, I'll point you in the right direction. Um, so thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been insightful for you and it helps as many of you as possible uh, with building a gaming PC for your golf simulator. Um, also, don't forget, click that subscribe button. Um, subscribe to Handicap Golf for more golf simulator-related content about the golf club, about Skytrack, uh, and so on. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you all soon.